According to a school of thought, it is not the beauty of a building that really matters. It is the construction of the foundation that really does. These lines reflect the long history and longevity of West Africa's premier chamber of commerce domiciled in the commercial nerve center of Nigeria. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce was established mainly by the British trading and shipping concerns in Lagos by proponents of commerce in the year 1888 to protect their commercial and economic interests in the face of diverse challenges confronting their activities. Interestingly, Lagos, the host city of the chamber, was and still is host to the most important port in Nigeria. Between 1840 and 1850, the town which is today called a mega city experienced a major transition in its economic relations with the outside world. This period witnessed the abrogation of slave trade and the beginning of the development of trade in other commodities, mainly in prime produce, oil and canal. The two trades coexisted uneasily during the first half of the 19th century. However, palm produce trade was initially at a disadvantage and could not compete effectively with all the trade. In 1851, the British government, in a bid to quell imperial disturbance, invaded Lagos, the city of aquatic splendor, and 10 years later, the trade in palm produce began to develop with the valuable protection of the British merchants. In addition, the introduction of steamships and the trade between Europe and West Africa in 1852 also created an atmosphere for the development of palm produce in Lagos as the innovation permitted the carriage of larger shipments and shortened the travel time between the two continents, thereby increasing the turnover of exports and imports. In the 1880s, there were about 60 merchants operating in Lagos alone, all of which are British, French, German, American, Brazilian and the African traders with the British trading houses predominating. The Lagos Observer in April 1887 reported a news item which suggested that a chamber of commerce was founded by African merchants. It was not clear how such a body, which excluded Europeans, was going to cope with the colonial policies of government. In fact, the existence of such an association was perceived as a challenge to European firms to form a similar body. But soon, for some curious reasons, the so-called African Chamber of Commerce became moribund and its structure and mode of operation during its short period of existence between 1887 and July 1888 are not known. Possibly, the impact of this news item, which led to the consultation between African and European merchants, resulted in the formation of Lagos Chamber of Commerce on July 13, 1888, and the residence of one of the Lagos merchants. The founding members comprised the representatives of the only 14 European firms, among whom were the four leading African businessmen of the day, R.B. Blaze, J.W. Cole, J.J. Thomas, and Z.A. Williams. However, two other Africans were co-opted by their positions as agents of European firms. They were C.B. Moore and A.C. Campbell. Interestingly, the first secretary of the chamber, Mr. Joe Thompson, the agent of Glasgow firm, officially notified the colonial secretary of the new body in August of the same year. The objectives of the chamber, as contained in its maiden constitution, was the protection of the interests of commerce as these may be affected by legislation, affairs of the interior, the freedom of roads and waterways, the mall services, the customs, the relation of steamships carrying companies with general community, and other matters which may be brought forward from time to time. For the records, in accordance with the constitution of the chamber, the following members were elected to the various offices for the year 1888 and 1889. President, A. R. Elliott Esquire, Vice President E. Fisher Esquire, Secretary Joe Thompson Esquire, Treasurer John D. Burley Esquire. With the giant strides and asset leadership of faithful service to all as associated by the Founding Father, generations of officers of the Chamber has kept the flag of the vision flying, 
while maintaining the core goals and the objectives of association with best global practice to meet the challenges of the new age. Moving into the 19th century, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce is described as the premier chamber of commerce in Nigeria. It was incorporated in the year 1950 as a non-profit making organization, limited by guarantee under the Companies Act of 1948. Very proud of the work that uh, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry has made, uh, has done through the years. Uh, I had many, many, many years, uh, interesting years from the 80s through the 90s into the 2000s uh, as a member of the council. I want to essentially congratulate every member of the cham chamber because of uh, that development, that progress that has taken place. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing that the economy of Lagos is now central economy in Nigeria. I mean, 70% uh, of the economy is, is Lagos. And it's not about um, crude oil, it's about how people apply themselves in commerce, how people apply themselves in, in production, and, and, and that is what the Lagos Chamber of Commerce has represented. The Chamber is rated first in West Africa, with the primary objective to promote, support, or oppose legislative or other measures affecting trade, industry, commerce and agriculture, as well as representing the opinion of the business community on the above matters and the economy. The mission of the Chamber is to promote and protect the interests of its members and the business community at large through public policy advocacy, creation and facilitation of commercial and industrial opportunity, provision of business development and services, and observance of high standard of business ethics while the vision is to remain the foremost chamber of commerce and industry and a role model for others in the promotion of sound business ethics and delivery of qualitative services. When you are 130 years, it's uh, not a joke, and then we're broken 130 years. We want to celebrate our founding fathers. We want to celebrate the giants who are, we are standing on their shoulder. We want to celebrate that we are 130 years. And we want, I mean, that we have reached this landmark. We look back. And we also look forward that 130 years from now, those of them who will be coming will also meet this chamber that we are celebrating 130 years. So we are going to celebrate, we are going to call people, friends to come around and look at what, at how it has been in the 130 years, how we have got into it. Maybe some other places will learn for a body to be in existence for 130 years and still going strong and relevant. People must have done some very great job. At that and that's what we are celebrating and want to showcase the chamber today till date the astro 21st century business leadership that lcci represents believes that positive change starts from within thus national development is more attainable when individuals group brands corporate organizations and policymakers at various level of government see their independence contribution as a major catalyst for growth with a public-private partnership, PPP, as the best strategy. The Chamber has grown impressively from a membership of 14 in 1888 to over 2,000 businesses today. Since its incorporation, the Chamber has continued to play a significant role in the economic growth of Lagos and Nigeria in general, and all activities of the Chamber are scrutinized and approved by the Committee as orchestrated in the organizational structure of the Chamber as follows. Executive Committee Finance and General Purpose Committee Membership Committee Economic and Statistics Committee Science and Technology Committee Ethics and Best Practice Committee Hotel, Tourism and Entertainment Committee Commerce Law and Taxation Committee and Public Affairs Committee the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the premier chamber in Nigeria and West African sub-region, has a strength which is very unique, and that strength has been sustaining it. The second point about the Lagos Chamber is the Secretariat. It's a well-structured, well-informed, well-trained Secretariat with members who are They've gone through the Rubicon. They are educated, 
they are well positioned. Well, the policy is to ensure that we bring on, we bring on board the new generation because we need a generation that will also be able to relate to the new generation of business people. If you look at the business landscape now, the key drivers, even at CEO levels of top companies, are possibly in their early 40s. Some of them in their late starting. The managers are in their 20s, you know. So because of that, we need to ensure the generational alignment between what you have in the chamber and what happens in the, in the Key activities of the Chambers include public policy advocacy and engagement to ensure a conducive working environment. So I'm Andrew Devon, uh, partner and chief economist at PwC Nigeria. I've been involved with LCCI for a number of years. Uh, PwC is very involved. Fantastic organization. I particularly like the industry group, so I'm very involved with the automobile industry group. I think they've done a very good job of articulating the issues and taking them uh, to advocacy, taking it to the, the political sphere, the government sphere. But I think we need to do more at LCCI. The reality is that Nigeria is not going to prosper unless there's a much bigger private sector. LCCI is the most important private sector advocacy uh, group in the country uh, and we need to do more. We need to be more vocal and I think LCCI also needs to play a role on a national stage because the Lagos economy is doing relatively well. I think in Lagos the government understands the importance of the private sector and there's a good dialogue but we need that same kind of dialogue and progress across the country. So. Uh, congratulations to LCCI for 130 years old, fantastic achievement, and I look forward to lots more success in the future. Trade promotion, facilitation of inward and outward trade missions for businesses. The feeling is that LCCI has grown come of age uh, in terms of the chamber movement in, let's say, in Africa. LCCI has demonstrated that it's a chamber that will promote the private sector and we'll be able to dialogue with the public sector in such a way that the public sector will have the feelings of the private sector and as you see uh, over the year in terms of uh, advocacy in terms of its programs like trade fair which has been a household name and the flagship program and something that uh, I've been there for uh, more than three decades uh, has set the pace in terms of the, uh, organizing trade fair in the whole of Africa and when you look at other programs that SSC has introduced such as uh, different dialogues and also the ICTEL which uh, a very very important uh, promoting the communication telecommunication information technology industry I think uh, ICCI has uh, performed to his uh, age and also to his image trade fair and exhibition Case study is the 10-day annual Lagos International Trade Fair, LITF. I commend the Lagos Trade Fair and Industry on the importance of this fair. Finally, I have the honor to declare the 19th Lagos Trade International Trade Fair. If you have visited the pavilion in the last 10 days, you will see the huge, huge potentials that are here in the state. People, were, people have been coming in droves, have been buying things at reduced prices. When I went around today, they told me that if you don't buy anything today, you are going to go back to the showroom price, which is higher. So the Lagos State Trade Fair is meant to give things to people at cheaper rates, and people have taken advantage of it, and we are happy about it as a state government. Arbitration Service of Commercial Dispute Resolution. The vision for setting up LASIAC is to provide an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. Our focus is for members of the Chamber and as well as, well as businesses generally. We provide both dispute resolution services as well as dispute management services for businesses. Training and Business Services Investments Conference Presidential Dialogue and Governorship Debates plus regular sectoral programs of the Chamber that are carried out through the 22 sectoral groups which cover a variety of interests with the Secretariat at Commerce House that provides the administrative and technical support for the day-to-day -day working of the Chamber. President Trekog 
recognizes this venerable institution. Richard is beginning in 1888. And we know that the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry is important not just for Lagos. It bears the name Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. But it is important for Nigeria because this is the hub of economic activity uh, in the country, the biggest hub. I think what we are finding is that LCCI has actively engaged government and continues to engage government, not just the LCCI umbrella organization, but also its component parts, like today was auto, um, the auto sort of um, manufacturers, or auto players. Now, what we find is that like, they are willing and able to partner with us because they have a very diversified and um, um, extensive membership base. Uh, the government takes them seriously. They take the government seriously. So we are, we are worthy partners and our partnership will continue. Highlights of the Chamber were showing track record. 1888, the first president of the Chamber. 1902 to 1983, pressed for the passing of Product Adulteration Act and achieved a 1% Product Adulteration. 1823 to 1930, the first African president of the Chamber emerged. 1946 to 1951, the Chamber was incorporated as a non-political and non-profit making organization limited by guarantee under the Companies Act of 1948. 1955 to 1960, the Chamber championed the formation of the National Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, NASIMA. 1963 to 1968, the first Nigerian post-independence president of the chamber emerged. 1970 to 1975, LCCI initiated and created Federation of West African Chambers of Commerce, OWAC. 1975 to 1979, LCCI president emerged as the only African and International Chambers Committee Executive Board LCCI initiated Ecobank Transnational Establishment. 1983 to 1987, LCCI organized the first trade fair. 1986, the Lagos International Trade Fair emerged. 1988, LCCI celebrated a centenary anniversary, 100 years of faithful service to all. 2013, the Chamber commenced LCCI Entrepreneurship Mentoring Program and in the same year, LCCI commenced the gubernatorial debate. 2014, LCCI commenced the Annual Commerce and Industry Awards designed to celebrate the award recognized and celebrate firms and individuals who have distinguished themselves by fostering growth, innovation, community service and excellence in their sectors. I would say the presentation of the awards today has been so excellent simply because you recognize those that have excelled themselves in their various fields and it will give them encouragement to please keep going despite us. You have said it, we have just exited the recession and so they have proved their metro that they can still do well in this economy and so sky is their limit, we have to encourage them. So SCCI has done great today to encourage them. 2015 marks the advent of LCCI's specialized exhibition with Formation, Communications, Technology and Telecommunications Expo. 2016, LCCI started the secondary school essay competition with the belief that building transgenerational businesses starts from within and catching them young. And in the same year, the chamber commenced the LCCI Presidential Policy Dialogue. 2017, the Chamber expanded to 22 sectoral group and more on the way. A school of thought believes that the taste of the pudding is in the eating. Therefore, we cannot tell the 130 years of global impact in one day. When it comes to global stage, as a past president of Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I've represented the Chamber at the global level, at the World Chamber Federation, Interna International Chamber of Commerce. I've attended so many in the fora where Lagos Chamber of Commerce is uh, specially recognized for its role in this uh, region, in this uh, continent. Uh, when it comes to advocacy, when it comes to mentoring, when it comes to uh, contributing to the economy, 
you can't leave Lagos Chamber's contribution out of the old setting. Let people know what you are doing. There are a lot of uh, entrepreneurs who are taking part in the trade fair and um, it's, it's really helping their businesses. They should come and they should come and join the Chamber of Commerce. It's the oldest chamber and the most successful chamber and it is the, the, the biggest in Nigeria and is the biggest in the West African sub-region. There is opportunities for everybody. We have committees for every group. Whatever your interest, you will find a group that will fit your interest. No one can do it alone. Um, and so when you run a business, you need a community around you, you need your business community around you. And so joining an association like the Chamber of Commerce helps in a number of ways. It helps you with technical assistance. You get to know, you get to gain knowledge about the work that you do, the business or the service that you render. Two, you get networking and community. You get to be with people who are in similar businesses as yourself. Some people have had your same challenges and actually conquered those challenges. You get to hear about that. So you don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, three, you get exposure to what's happening internationally so you yourself can aspire and you yourself can grow. And then four, you get to contribute to the Nigerian economy and feel like a really relevant and contributing person in this economy. My goodwill message to the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry is that it should continue with the traditional policy of trying to innovate, recreate itself all the time. Otherwise, it will become atrophied. The reason why after 130 years, the chamber is still vibrant and still relevant is because the organizers, both the officer level, the president, vice president and all that, and also the management have endeavored to continue to improve. It's important that is borne in mind. And I'm happy that um, a lot has been happening. After I left in 2005, the chamber, even some parts of it I couldn't recognize anymore because of uh, they didn't rest on their oars. They were innovative and they were creative. So that's, I think, that uh, attitude and policy, I think, should continue. And then the issue of um, succession. The system now is very orderly. Success is a project that is always work in progress. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce, with its current positioning at the world stage, has remained focused on its set objectives in supporting entrepreneurs with the craving to build transgenerational businesses by being proactive and faithful service to all.